All right. So one last of what I would call the good scores. So this was a 4.75, meaning the student got uh, four fives and uh, a four, I guess, or something along those lines. Uh, and they're discussing uh, bringing the farmer's market home. Uh, the student did something that I think is wise when you prepare it on paper, but when you go to the uh, website to submit, I would cut out the actual questions. This did make it easier, and it actually makes it easier in this document when you read uh, to do. In other classes, I would recommend that you do copy the question into your answer, uh, but here I think you need to go ahead out to conserve some space. Uh, student does a nice job going through the case. Let's see here. I had a couple comments buried down in here. Uh, the student could have brought in uh, some of the generic strategies from the lectures and textbook. Uh, I've got a note to myself here to tell you a little bit about Whole Foods. Uh, my wife refers to Whole Foods as Whole Paycheck. Uh, she likes shopping there, but uh, the prices on some items are as much as double even for things like Kellogg cereal. So uh, it's difficult to say. Uh, I also call it four bucks for Starbucks. So these are some of these premium services where you're not just paying for what you buy for the commodity, you're paying for the experience. And the student does a nice job of going through uh, some of the challenges of delivering food uh, fresh etc. And actually there's a long history surrounding this uh, topic of fresh food delivery from the cattle drives. I come from uh, West Texas where we used to drive cattle from Texas all the way up to Kansas City from, and at the Kansas City stockyards they would be uh, fed and fattened and then they would actually be sent to Chicago to be slaughtered and from Chicago the broken apart cow would be uh, sent around the world. So you know, that was a hundred years ago, and it talks about cattle drives, stockyards, uh, railroads, uh, the role of butcher shops. In other words, you were no longer getting whole cattle to a butcher shop inside a city. It was coming broken down. Uh, there's a very good movie and book. It's actually derived from a book. The movie has James Dean, and it. it's called East of Eden. And the uh, part of the story starts off with talking about refrigerated delivery. And it's a failure of a uh, refrigerated delivery scheme that uh, sends uh, our hero, James Dean, out to seek his mother, who turns out to be a uh, prostitute, a madam, if you will. Good story. But this is a big topic, and it's not a new topic is my point to you. And the student could have brought in some of that. Um, the student did an excellent job. No more was required. But with that said, bringing in other elements to make it more interesting. And the student did some of that, by the way. So let's see. Uh, uh, the student did a very good job of analyzing the supply chain delivery scheme. I do not think the company should base when they send their produce based on when the produce is accumulated. In other words, this person saying it should go out every day. Uh, these are the sorts of things that are value statements and drive organizational strategy. I thought this student did a very good job again. And Oh, the other thing this student did uh, an excellent job on was the field study. Uh, they really went out and looked up a lot of additional information did a fairly nice uh, comparison of websites. I might have even gone as far here. Uh, if they really wanted to be superlative and over the top, maybe made a table of what are the elements of an excellent website. Here are the different websites and how they performed. Uh, a little a picture or a table is often worth a thousand words. Nevertheless, the student did a nice job. Uh, and this one actually had some of the best peer feedback. So if you want to download some of the peer feedback here, this is a good example. Uh, the student who wrote this first answer was very focused on the substance of what the student said. I like that. Substance is the important part. Not that the structure doesn't matter, but giving good substantive feedback is the hallmark of good feedback. Uh, the student didn't give much negative feedback. I would agree, think that you need to give some uh, actionable advice as well. Not negative feedback necessarily. 
Uh, this person mentioned I ranked yours as number one on my list. Uh, I think that's okay to say. Uh, they should be able to see it. So giving people a relative feel for how they're doing is also important. You'll notice down in some of the lower scored ones that we're about to look at, uh, that didn't happen as often. Here, again, the use of bulleted points is, I've got it in yellow, it's got its good and its bad fe features. One, you need some narrative to tell what it is you're doing. Uh, the second reason I sort of highlighted this in yellow is most of this feedback is based on the structure or rather than the content. So they're not really giving them substantive feedback about the content of their answers. They're giving very good feedback on how the answer was structured technically, meaning the grammar, the use of paragraphs, etc. And they recognize that a lot of time and effort went into this. And again, I, I also want to say that it was very clear this student spent, clearly spent time on it. Uh, another very good piece of feedback. Let's see what was I liked about this. Uh, this person brought in very specific elements of point of delivery, talking about specific questions that they liked. Again, here, here's sort of the negative feedback, or not negative, actionable or questioning feedback or entering into a dialogue. Maybe that's the best way to think about it, is do you enter into a dialogue in your feedback with the person in a substantive way? So if we actually had a chance to revise and resubmit could that person make it better? And this person disagrees with the UPS and FedEx being cheaper options than other positive. So that's a very good job. And gives them, you know, a bravo Zulu or a kudos here. And that's fair, fair enough. Nice to do. All right, here we see some uh, of the lower scoring responses. Uh, this one, Subway runs past McDonald's uh, earlier uh, this year or maybe late last year. Subway opened... Uh, some number of franchises and that f number of franchises was now more than McDonald's. Really remarkable that there's that many subways, uh, at least in the United States. So this person talks a little bit about subway. Notice these answers are generally rather short. I think this was the one, I'll have to look into the answers here, where they didn't necessarily answer the all the question. Uh, in other words, many of the questions had multiple parts. This person tended to answer only the first part of the question. Sorry, I'm just looking along here with you. If you're reading quickly, you can see uh, I'm just correcting some of the grammar as I go where I see it. Again, they're talking about the answers are a little bit choppy, uh, that they didn't provide a clear, cohesive argument. One way to check yourself on your case response is if you take out the questions, does the document read down the page independent of having the questions juxtaposed against it? And that's a good check for how your case is doing. Uh, I'm not sure unprofessional is the word I would have used here. However, the student makes a valid point that using the first person singular, I, me, you, uh, may not be the best uh, approach to use in business communication. Uh, you have to learn use that sparingly. Again, this person actually makes some nice points related concepts from the readings, on and on. Uh, again, here's another uh, one dealing with the Japan case. This one was at the other end of the spectrum. And this will actually give you an opportunity, if you compare the two answers, to see how people brought in good versus uh, poor things. Now, I'm just looking at this. You know, when I see the green lines under there, I'm curious why people aren't fixing that. I mean, you're, surely your computers do this as well, right? So you see, I'm simply correcting things using my computer.
Uh, so this person says you did not answer fully. They did not answer part six and seven, hence the reason many people took off for this. Uh, what they're even suggesting, this is actually quite good feedback, you could have compared this to your Globus company, etc. So that's pretty good feedback. Well, I'm going to stop there, I think. Uh, oh, the problem with this one was somebody didn't answer the right case. And yet the peer reviewers, and kudos to the reviewers, who all seem to have gone out and actually pulled down the case that the student answered and looked over it. That was the point there. Uh, these are some middling cases here. Uh, Florida cigarette matter maker battles uh, the feds, I think was the storyline. Uh, I was surprised that more students did not use the Laurelard case. In other words, there's a, a cigarette manufacturer in Greensboro, North Carolina, and they happen to produce a cigarette called Salem Menthols, which is very popular. Uh, it's particularly popular in the African American community. In other words, the big part of their sales and marketing targets African Americans. However, uh, the menthol cigarettes are being targeted by the FDA and uh, a few other government agencies as being uh, problematic. Uh, and I would have brought that into my case. All right. So the student's giving fairly brief answers. Again, not taking as much F, uh, time as they could have to fill out everything possible. So a very short to the point answers. So even short to the point, as long as they're right, gets you up to a three. Okay. And the use of bullet points, but they need to be contextualized. Uh, I thought this answer from Pier 4, see, bringing out some of the good points, this case had the most clarity of any, so it was well written. I'm not disagreeing with that. Uh, Again, they're pointing out content areas. The writer's recommendation that dose all switch to a different strategy shows their understanding. And then the student actually makes a bit of a stretch here, and I think that this was a good point. Again, it's underlined in red. Might as well fix it. Uh, since this is a Cuban company at heart, I believe there are opportunities for dose all to make distinguishable changes in their product based upon cultural infusion. Uh, I think that's a very good point. We're seeing some of that now with products like Coca-Cola. If you go to your local grocery store and walk down the uh, aisle that has the Chinese, Mexican, uh, Jewish, you know, the ethnic food section, you'll actually see Coca-Cola and it's made with cane sugar. And a lot of that cane sugar in Coca-Cola originally came from Cuba. So uh, as Cuba opens up, I think you're going to see a lot of products marketing their Cuba answer. Uh, here's some more very good feedback from Pier 5. Uh, essentially saying, I don't think the basis for your answer is correct. And we actually see, so both of these people are questioning the stra strategic decision this person made in their case. Lastly, I want to encourage you to seek outside information. So again, very good feedback on sort of a middling case. And I'm going to stop there. This last one was a uh, case that was sort of near and dear to my heart on uh, community colleges, etc. But you can read through the responses, see what I've highlighted, and go from there.